saw this painting in an art gallery today, you could easily walk past it without thinking much about it. But in its own time, this painting caused such a controversy that it forced the painter to flee the country and destroyed the life of the model. The painting is known today as the portrait of Madame X. But in its time, people recognized the model as Virginie Amélie Gautreau. Gautreau was an American-born Parisian socialite. When her father died in the American Civil War, her mother moved with her to France with the aim of educating her into high society and ultimately to find her a successful marriage. And on all accounts, she did. Virginie married Pierre Gautreau, a French banker and shipping magnate. But while he was a lucrative match, he definitely wasn't a love match. He was described as small, singularly ugly, and twice her age. A decidedly ill match for a woman of celebrated beauty. See, Gautreau gained many admirers and became known as one of Paris's most desirable beauties. She was celebrated for her pale skin, her beautiful brunette hair, and her stunning hourglass figure. Becoming such a famous figure in high society and caught in a rather loveless match, Gautreau is believed to have engaged in a few extramarital affairs to help her pass the time. One such lover was Dr. Samuel Jean Posse, a gynecologist and art collector. And we all know what they say about dating your gynecologist. His portrait was painted by John Singer Sargent, captured quite strikingly in this papal red robe. But after setting his eyes on Samuel's mistress, the painter would also find himself under the spell of her beauties. Sargent would ask to be introduced to the beautiful Gautreau. But Sargent and Gautreau also had a lot in common. Both of them found themselves on the edges of high society and had to work their way in. Sargent's mother had been anxious to climb the social ladder and encouraged Sargent to do so via his work. Sargent became a celebrated portrait painter, but when it came to Gautreau, he didn't want to paint her for commission. He wanted to paint her picture to display in the salon in 1884. Now, Gautreau had been an experienced model. She had sat before for long hours having her portrait painted, and by the time it came to Sargent, she was decidedly tired of the process. She made Sargent wait until she was summering with her husband in their chateau in Brittany. And even there he found her pretty unwilling to cooperate. As he once wrote to his friend Vermin Lee, Your letter has just reached me, still in this country house, struggling with the unpaintable beauty and hopeless laziness of Madame Gautreau. After completing 30 studies of her in pencil, oil, and watercolour, Sargent finally had his masterpiece. It was named The Portrait of Madame dot dot dot, but the public recognised her immediately. By today's standard, it's a portrait of captivating beauty. We see her beautiful side profile. Her hair is pulled back in a style recalling ancient Greece. And in her hair, we see a tiara which has a diamond crescent, the symbol of the huntress and goddess Diana. But to the public of 1884, this portrait depicted a wanton woman flaunting her immoral lifestyle. The gown's plunging neckline and exposed cleavage showed far too much skin, skin which appeared far too white. It was suggested that Gautreau may be ingesting arsenic to lighten her skin, a practice which other fashionable women did but which wasn't publicly praised. But the most controversial aspect of all was the strap that had fallen from her shoulder. In the original painting, Gautreau was displayed with a single strap falling from her shoulder. This fallen strap and slumping pose was seen as far too sensual. The model was decidedly erotic, and what made this so scandalous was that her wedding ring was on display. 
This was interpreted as an unapologetic declaration that she was engaging in extramarital affairs. This painting entirely destroyed the reputation that she had tried so hard to build in high society. Gautreau had solidified herself as an adulteress. See, in this time in Paris, it was incredibly common for people to be having affairs. And often, other people in society would know about them. But publicly acknowledging them was entirely unacceptable. Talk about the ultimate double standard. The painting was condemned by every critic. One even stated that if you stood in front of the portrait at the exhibition, you would hear every curse word in the French language. A report in the Times stated that Sargent is below his usual standard this year. The pose of the figure is absurd and the bluish colouring is atrocious. The features are so exaggerated that the natural delicacy of the outline is entirely lost. Sargent has made this so-called beauty look like a mere caricature. Gautreau's mother was understandably furious. As she is believed to have stated to Sargent, all of Paris is making fun of my daughter. She is ruined. My people will be forced to defend themselves. She'll die of chagrin. The model herself felt the weight of her situation. I will try to get over this sadness, which for several days has overwhelmed me and makes me depressed enough to die. But Gautreau never truly recovered. Following his exhibition, Sargent would make a crucial adjustment and repaint the strap to be over her shoulder. But the damage to both the reputation of the model and the painter was destroyed. The scandal which followed forced Sargent to flee from Paris and move to Britain. And it took many years for him to continue his work. He would, however, eventually go on to lead a healthy career. Seen at a distance from the scandal, the portrait was considered a demonstration of Sargent's skill. And when it was again displayed at the Metropolitan Museum in 1916, Sargent exclaimed that it was the best thing he had ever done. The same can't be said for Gautreau. Little is known about her story following the controversy because she seems to have all but disappeared from society. She would eventually die in 1915, with the rest of her life seeming to pass in comparable silence. A lot can be learned from this story about the relationship between artist and muse, the historical treatment of women, or about the history of fashion. Or, perhaps most importantly, the timeless power of a little black dress. And if you enjoyed my lesson here today, remember to keep subscribing for plenty more kinky history.